A very warm welcome to my very first vlog. This episode is all about preparation before art markets this autumn season. My cat Milo is quite featured as he is my loyal assistant. First, I'm enjoying this golden afternoon light in my office and I'm trying to wrap up the finishing touches of these season-inspired ballerinas. I'm really excited because I designed these in mind for eventually creating acrylic charms or stickers. I think the designs will translate really well. I've already been in touch with a manufacturer to make acrylic charm keychains, which I've always wanted to make, so I'm really excited. But I'll make art prints first because that's a lot faster, and then hopefully the charms will be ready before the holiday market season. I did my nails because I knew I was going to take some product photos this week where my hands might be featured up close. Actually, my dear friend from college started Mooncat Nail Polish and they have such magical colors. I'm using the Siren's Deceit color which is shimmering holographic. And I'm adding these gold nail stickers which add instant charm. I like to DIY at home because I'm very active with my hands and they tend to get beat up anyways, so I really embrace this as a relaxing hobby. I find that the biggest aspect of prepping for markets is making sure you have the inventory and prints ready. It's quite a lot of busy work, so it's nice to have a little drink tree and just get going. I actually usually drink instant coffee, but every once in a while my husband makes us espresso, so that's always an extra treat. So here we go, let's get caffeinated. Grab a drink too and we can do some work together. I have some packages and mail to open, so first, something from my friend Garrett who just started his Patreon. Garrett and I are good friends from college and we also worked at Disney together, he's a talented animator. And this is from his personal project, Chirp Mail. They are amazing animated shorts and so hilarious. They've gone viral online so you may have seen them, but if you haven't, you have to check them out. They're so good. I love these stickers and postcard goodies from Patreon, thank you! It's also really cool and inspiring to have a friend who's also exploring their own personal artistic voice and pursuing creative endeavors outside of work. Congrats Garrett and I can't wait to see how your journey goes. Everyone, make sure you check out his work. Next up, I just picked up these prints of my latest painting. It's a carousel inspired by dreams. I have the mini print and the large ones and the details turned out so great. You may recognize this from my first YouTube video, which is the collab with XP Pen. So this was painted on the Artist Pro 19, and here is the final product in final print form. Next up, I'm so excited to open this package. I have been waiting and I've been so curious, so let's open it up together. It's my carousel but in sticker form. Let's open this up because there's a very special feature about this that I can't wait to check out. So check this out. It is transparent. So I think it's going to look very floaty and airy on whatever you place it on. I love how the details turned out and I think this is just going to look so whimsical on whatever you place it on. Also, I'm so glad with how my nails turned out to be featured with product photos and this footage. I feel like these stickers will really look great on whatever surface they stick on, like if you had a colored water bottle, that color is going to show through. And because the stickers are waterproof, I was thinking about what it would look against my drink glass. At first, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to stick it on my water bottle, but then I figured it'd be a really fun way to enjoy it. I love how these turned out. I've been wanting to make more stickers, so this is such an exciting first step. What I'm most excited about is just getting to see how people might use and enjoy them, where they might place them, how that sticker might fit in their life. I hope it might add some whimsy and fantasy to their day, like when you look at it, you just start daydreaming into another place. Anyways, I had so much fun painting this piece, and it's so gratifying to see them as prints and stickers. It's almost like they take on a life of their own, and now people can take them home to enjoy for themselves. Now it's time to sign some prints, starting with the carousel ones. I used to not sign my art, but what would happen is I would be selling at art markets, and sweet customers would ask me to sign them as the artist. But sometimes the event is really busy and you keep everyone waiting. You need to run the transaction, you need to take the art out of the plastic sleeve, sign it. It can take some time for the ink to dry. 
You need to add the art back into the protective sleeve. It just adds another step in general. So I just decided to be proactive and now every print is just guaranteed to have my signature. I'm always experimenting and trying different metallic pens, but right now I'm using a silver one with a fine tip so it's really easy to write with. Sometimes the sharpie ones, they aren't quite fine enough of a tip so my signature looks kind of chunky instead of very elegant. As you can see, you can get really into the flow and it goes pretty quickly so I like to listen to music and keep the momentum up. Later in the evening, I decided it was time to take the freshly signed prints and then pack them into protective plastic sleeves. I leave the more mindless or brainless tasks for the end of the day whenever my brain is tired. Got to change into some comfy clothes, Milo joined me. Although Milo, he has his own ideas of how to best assist me. <laughs> Thank you, Milo. I think the protective plastic sleeve adds a nice level of polish so people know that the art is protected inside when they carry it around. Some artists also include the rigid cardboard backing so that nothing bends, but I find I don't need them for the events. I do use them for Etsy orders to make sure the packages are protected when mailed out so they definitely don't bend. And we're making a lot of progress getting through all these prints. This is the perfect way to catch up on TV, YouTube, or a podcast. I think I'm listening to Lavender here, so I look very peaceful and focused. Once I'm done packing each sleeve, I still need to seal each one. I separate the tasks so I can batch the same automatic motions, if that makes sense. So signing prints is one task. Inserting them into a protective plastic sleeve is another and then ripping off the tape and sealing the flap of the protective sleeve is the final step. Otherwise, I find you're switching between motions. This way just feels most efficient to me, like I'm a one-person assembly line and Milo's my supervisor. Soon enough, after some good TV, I'm all set and we did it. Thank you for joining me. We are all set for upcoming markets. And then I always check this bin to see if I ever need to refresh any inventory. Milo gave us a high five. This is one of Milo's favorite spots to sleep. It's right behind my Cintiq, so he's kind of tucked away in a corner where he can really take some peaceful naps. I have a couple of online orders that I want to fulfill, so I'm going to my closet to take out supplies. After I do any deep work like drawing, I like to pick up a task like this kind of gives my brain a break and it's fun and nice to check this off my to-do list. Here are the orders. I got three separate orders of different artwork prints. And then I pack each print order with a business card which has my artwork on it. And then I'll also write a little thank you note. Ever since I started my art business, I've always been handwriting my thank you notes. I've thought about making like a bonus little card that has my art on it and then I can fill that thank you note easily um, but I just haven't gotten around to it or sometimes it's hard for me to commit on what I want the design or what art should go on it so for now I'm just gonna handwrite them which I think adds a nice touch anyways. The art also comes signed on the back but I just think a little note is a nice gesture as well. It's still really surreal and I always can't get over the idea that someone wanted to buy my art and that it might be hanging in their home. So I like to enjoy that moment of writing a sincere thank you note. When I pack my orders, I wanna make sure they're really secure and that they don't get bent. So I often add this little cardboard backing sleeve. I think it's the combination of the cardboard backing sleeve plus the envelope it goes in. Both of them reinforce each other and make sure everything is strong and secure as a package. Another touch I like to add is decorating envelopes with washi tape. I really like this gold kind of mermaid scale vibe to this one so we'll keep things on theme together. Sometimes I just have extra time and so I will just sit in front of the TV and just add washi tape to a bunch of envelopes so that they're ready and waiting for when I get a print order. 
I always try to be really conscientious about making sure the package is really safe and secure so taping things down and adding these do not bend stickers even though they <laughs> look very loud and bold I think it's important so that these prints make it safely to their new owners. I also have a lot of fun packaging prints, especially the small ones. The large ones can get unwieldy and I get worried if they'll get bent. The small ones are pretty streamlined and I kind of have a system down and it's always fun to see what small prints people want to pick out. It really does feel like a mindful practice to slow down and treat these like I'm packing them up like a gift or a present for someone. And I like to take the moment to really appreciate that I get to do this and that people actually want my art. And also, I make a lot of my art because I want to relax and decompress, and I really hope that is conveyed in my art so when people open the package, when people put my art on their walls or their office cubicles, it reminds them to relax too. Anyways, if you've ever ordered anything from me, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. This truly feels like a bonus or like extra credit. Like I just wouldn't be making art anyways. And I just love that, you know, people happen to love my art enough that they'll also buy a print from me. So thank you so much. I guess by now you can tell where I chose to take my day off. I am very lucky that I still have a couple of complimentary tickets left from when I was working at Disney Feature Animation. I worked on Encanto so I wanted to visit Mirabelle and I'd never seen Luisa before, their costumes look amazing. I spotted this Raya, Mirabelle, and Queen Anna doll from Frozen 2. I was so excited to see Wish merch and it's always gratifying to see toys of the movies you worked on in the parks. I genuinely love just walking around and taking in the sights, admiring all the beautiful, thoughtful, and clever designs and tiny details. There's always something new and lovely to admire. I had been wanting to put together a trailer video for my art book Demitas, so I thought it would be fun to decorate a tablescape. I wanted to design my own flower arrangement, so I took a little artist date to the flower market in LA. I love drawing, but it's also so much fun to pick different hobbies that let you have a different creative outlet just to shake things up. I loved getting to walk around and see all the unique and possible floral textures and colors, and I decided to try to convey the same color palette as the cover of my book. Once I was all set, I got an email that some art prints were ready at my local shop, so I got to pick them up on my way home. I love when things line up like that. A very productive and efficient creative morning. Have you ever arranged your own flowers before? I think it's one of the most relaxing creative things you can do. I first tried it because I DIY'd my own wedding bouquet and I've been hooked ever since. You can buy your own favorite flowers from your local grocery store like Trader Joe's, but I like to take advantage of LA's flower district. First is to strip the bottom stems of any leaves so that you can get a very streamlined base of your bouquet. I kept all my different florals very separate and I started to strip them of their leaves on the bottom. You can measure how tall you want your flowers to look against the vase you use and then trim their stems accordingly to the right height. A nice combination is picking some featured flowers, some filler flowers, and then some greenery to round things out. Once prep is all set, what you want to do is you can loosely grip your hand and then start adding in and composing your flowers. Some people also use like chicken coop wire to create a little bundle that you can stick the stems through, that way the composition stays intact. I'm just doing it pretty casually and I'm adding a rubber band just to secure things in place. Once you're close, you'll also want to trim the ends of the stems so that they're even and try to get them at a diagonal so they take up water. I had two vases so I ended up making two large bouquets to fill out the space of the tablescape and it was so much fun. I loved how the colors turned out. 
I chose chamomile as a filler flower to bring in that yellow gold tone and then the greenery I chose was actually spray painted with gold. Here's how both bouquets turned out. By now, the book trailer is now out on my YouTube channel so you can see them in the context of my video. I hope you had a really relaxing time watching me build out these bouquets and I hope you try it yourself sometime. On to filming the book trailer itself. This is actually an outtake that was originally in the trailer. I had turned the butterfly pea flower tea from blue to a more pink purple by adding lemon juice. The acid creates a magical color change. Ultimately, I decided the blue hue matched the book cover better, but I had so much fun filming. I hope you are able to check out the book trailer too, especially if you enjoyed these behind the scenes. Once I filmed all the footage, it was time for editing. This is me doing voiceover with Milo keeping me company. With making videos, concepting, scripting, art directing, filming, and editing, it's an engaging and stimulating way to express myself. And with that, our vlog is coming to a close. A genuine thank you for watching. This is my first ever studio vlog and it means so much to me if you made it all the way through the end of the video. I really hope that this was relaxing and interesting to watch all the behind the scenes of my life. I would love to continue to make more, so please let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see in future videos. In this video, I was mostly preparing for upcoming events like LA Comic Con and Lightbox Expo 2024, so I will also have some Artist Alley vlogs coming soon. I'm also just having fun exploring my voice while making these videos, so thank you so much for being along for the journey. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to stay tuned for more. Wishing you all the very best, and I hope to see you in the next video.